I'm going to assume the technology works. And so far, so good. Um, first, I would like to say thank you to the Islamic World Academy of Sciences, and I bring greetings to all of you from uh, the National Academy of Sciences. And I had a long list of people I was supposed to meet here, um, and I've met some of them, and I'm, I'm very impressed by this meeting and the way it's organized, and very impressed by the cases that I've heard from Professor uh, Atto Rahman um, and Professor Badran about the kinds of changes that are possible. Um, the other thing I just want to say is, uh, well, uh, Dr. Sullivan has spoken this morning, but as the only resident American at this meeting, um, I'll admit to having felt a little bit uh, uncomfortable, perhaps, yesterday, probably rightfully so. Um, but then I woke up this morning, and I turned on CNN, and I found myself thinking, Allahu Akbar, uh, <laughs> that our president has learned a lesson in democracy. Um, and so we, we'll see what happens now. Um, uh, Professor Nakib talked about uh, assessment, as did Professor Hanjali. Um, let me talk a little bit about global assessment and then go on uh, to talk about what the National Academies are doing in the US. And I assume, which button do I push? Do I just, no? Here. Oh, OK. Um, let me give you a short outline of what I'm going to say. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about definitions, about what units should be assessed, about who are the appropriate judges, uh, who is helped by an assessment, um, who is act, who it acts on the knowledge that is produced by an assessment about global assessment like the uh, Shanghai Xingtao and the uh, Times assessment. And then uh, briefly um, talk about the, our assessment in the American context. And I should add that the American context is one where our Ministry of Education um, has no control uh, over institutions of higher education. Uh, there are assessment boards and there is an asset, um, it, there are accreditation boards and there is an accreditation process, um, but it is not one where it, that can be controlled really. And so doing an assessment like what we're doing um, is, is quite important to, uh, to quality. Um, when we talk about assessment, I thought about the original meeting, and it means to set the value of something, for example, for taxation. Um, in an educational context, it's really about the measurement of education inputs and outputs and performance. And, you know, an example would be comparison of scores on, on standardized tests. You heard an example from Professor Naguib this morning. Um, and there also is the International Mathematics and Science Study. Um, we're trying to compare things with our assessment uh, to do benchmarking. And the reason we're doing it is to learn in order to improve what we're doing. It's not just, you know, who's number one. It's also, if we're not number one, not how can we become number one, but how can we improve what we're doing and perhaps number one will be a result of that improvement. And it, uh, a good assessment will identify areas for improvement. There are lots of different things that you can assess. Um, a single class, a faculty, a graduate program, a division or school, a university, a higher education system. And they all require slightly different tools um, that are appropriate to the unit. So um, just because a university is not rated very well doesn't mean that there aren't excellent programs within that university. And the idea would be to bring other programs up um, 
in order to bring the university as a whole up. Um, who should do the assessment? Uh, the judges need to be knowledgeable about what is assessed. Uh, this is a big problem because often um, in assessments you ask people who are in high positions, and I think that includes a number of people in this room, um, what they think about the chemistry program at some university. Well, they think about the university name, um, but maybe they don't know all that much about the chemistry program and how good it actually is. Um, the judges need to be unbiased, um, and they need to agree on standards and apply them consistently. And what I liked um, that I heard this morning uh, was Dr. Naguib's um, uh, discussion about how he trained the assessors um, before he sent them in to look at the institutions. Um, who is helped by an, assess an assessment? Because, you know, again, this is not just to have a horse race. This is to make things change. Um, and the first thing is that sometimes the act of collecting the data um, makes people change their behavior. Um, I have a friend who calls this the cockroach theory, uh, which is when you have a lot, you don't have cockroaches in the Arab world, but um, when you have cockroaches, they're little bugs uh, gathered in one place, sometimes all you have to do is turn the light on and they run away. Um, anyhow, sometimes the act of collection itself may change things. Um, the other thing about the data that we collect is that it needs to be something you can act on. It can't just describe um, what the situation is. Um, and so if you say that half of the people in the country are poor, all right, that's descriptive. But, and if you find that poor students don't do so well in university, okay, that's descriptive. But the question is, what does the university do to improve um, the performance of poor students? Um, the clients of assessment uh, are, stu for us, are students and their families and funders who have to allocate limited resources. And the scholars and researchers are also beneficiaries because maybe they can better understand the system dynamics and presumably uh, see paths to improvement that we didn't already know about before. Um, who acts on that knowledge? Uh, students choose where to attend. Faculty choose where to seek employment. And governments choose where to allocate funding. And so even in as diverse a system as the American one, uh, there are consequences of doing careful assessment. There are many assessments in higher education. I've heard about a couple um, at this meeting that I didn't know so much about. Um, but the global, the famous global ones are the Shanghai University uh, International Rankings and the Times Higher Education Supplement. And I'm going to talk about them just briefly about what's in them and probably why they're not particularly appropriate uh, to you. Um, the other thing is there are league tables usually put together by magazines um, who, who ask administrators, you know, how are they doing uh, without necessarily presenting a whole lot of data to them so that they can judge in an informed way. Um, then there are peer review assessments. Uh, in England, there's the research assessment exercise. Um, and in the US, there is the study that we have done over the past 20 years. Um, I just want to say briefly, and, and maybe you'll hear about this in the next session, but what goes into these ratings is important because sometimes you put things in the ratings that would make it impossible um, if your university was not really connected on, the global, on a global scale. And so you, you need to think about what's there. For example, in the Shanghai University, okay, Nobel Prizes and Fields Medals. Well, that's all very fine. 
but um, you know, those are, are kind of in the stratosphere when it comes to um, uh, having faculty who do that, um, and having highly cited researchers. But again, being highly cited depends on being part of a network of researchers. Um, the other thing is the research output, um, articles in nature and science, uh, again, a fairly stratospheric publications, um, and articles in the Science Citation Index and the Social Citation, uh, Science Citation Index. Um, getting a lesser weight are alumni that win Nobels or Field Medals, thank you very much, um, and also uh, the quality of education, which is the intensive version of the uh, uh, measures above. The, um, these have been criticized, and they should be. Um, first, for what we're doing, we include the humanities and social sciences, and they're almost entirely science and engineering based. And the weights are arbitrary. You know, who's to say that uh, Nobel winners get 20%? Um, the relevance of the elements to quality can be questioned. If you choose to measure particular things that are very rare, um, what, what can you do about that? Well, aside from uh, hiring a Nobel Prize winner, there isn't a lot that you can do. Um, however, the Shanghai ratings are global in scope, and all the elements are quantifiable. You can target at least some of the, object, some of the objectives, um, particularly citations and publications. But a research environment is much more than citations and publications. These are the, the products of the environment, but how you create the environment is not really answered by the question of how many citations do you have. Um, for the Times Education, Higher Education Supplement, it's different. Um, it has more peer review as one of the uh, elements. It too looks at citations per faculty member. Um, it looks a little bit at education. In particular, it looks at the staff to student ratio, which as you saw this morning, is not so good in many um, areas in Arab universities. Um, and it has a recruiter review by employers. Again, you're getting closer to the industrial um, uh, linkage. And also at the, at the degree of internationalness um, of the institution. But again, um, peer review is good, but it's subjective. And so you have to think about how the raters are trained. Um, and the question is, are these the right measures? Um, are those the right weights? Uh, however, basically, peer judgment is good. That's how we decide on merit in, the science, and, in science and technology. Um, it's good to think about the internationalness of an institution. Um, and it's important to have uh, productive faculty to make for a good research environment. What's the relevance of these world rankings, which you'd love to be in, because there are very few uh, institutions in the IWAS world, and in particular, um, I think there are a couple of institutions in Malaysia. Uh, there's the University of Cairo, and that's about it in the top 500. But is it relevant? Is this something you want to do? Um, I would say not much. Uh, I would say the measures are manifestations of a well-developed research infrastructure, and until you build that infrastructure, you don't really, um, you know, it's, it's sort of irrelevant. You should focus on what you can do, which is building that infrastructure, and we've heard quite a bit about it today. Um, the measures uh, reflect involvement in networks of scientists and journal editors, Again, that says, go abroad, be really good there, get known internationally, and then come back. Um, and I'm pleased that the papers at this, at this meeting 
uh, put forward more appropriate assessment schemes. Now, very quickly, let me tell you what we're doing in the U.S. And let me say that these are doctoral programs, um, and so uh, there are not so many institutions here that give doctorates, but it is a, the idea of the uh, assessment is, um, uh, is one that uh, could be applied elsewhere. And I have a lot more than I can go through, but we have been doing this over time. Um, the uh, NRC is very prestigious. National Research Council is very prestigious in the U.S. Uh, we're authoritative, comprehensive. We say what we're doing, um, uh, and we have continuity over time. Uh, it's very widely quoted. It is the gold standard of assessments. However, last time, for example, we ranked all biochemistry programs uh, from 1 to 135. And we all know that, in fact, there's much more ambiguity about where programs should be. Um, it confounded research reputation and educational quality. Um, much that I've heard today has been about research, research reputation, but in fact, uh, you also have to think about what you're doing with the students um, and the quality of that experience, because in fact, that affects how good they're going to be later on. Um, uh, also, asking for reputational measures from excellent to unsatisfactory are criteria that our committees thought of as soft. And um, our studies carried out only once a decade. Uh, we didn't spread it, tell people about it very well. Uh, we had an 800-page book, of which all but 100 pages were tables. Um, uh, and so we didn't really explain what was in the tables. And the categories in the taxonomy were out of date. Um, and our validation of data was inadequate, in fact, non-existent. How am I doing? Five, Five minutes, OK. <laughs> All right, we'll do it on a bicycle. Um, OK, what we found, we had a committee that looked at it because the academy members said, well, if you're going to do it that way, you shouldn't do it again. Um, so we had a committee uh, that looked at how to do it better. And they said, OK, present rankings in ranges to show the uncertainty of them. Um, put more emphasis on the quantitative measures. These are things that people can use for benchmarking. Um, make it useful to students and say what kind of analyses you can do with these data. Um, so we went about doing something about that. We're not doing pure reputational ratings. Um, we don't think that we can find raters who, across um, uh, all the fields, we, our, our diverse system, I, I should say quickly, ha we have over 200 universities, and in some fields there may be um, uh, 180 programs. There, it is impossible to find a rater who will know all those programs, so you have to um, uh, we're, we're not so impressed with rater knowledge. Um, we, people like r ratings. They don't often ask what's behind them. Um, and, but what can you substitute instead? Well, you can use quantitative measures, um, and you can weight them empirically. You can look at ratings, and you can say, how did they relate to these measures? And then use the coefficients on the measures to construct a synthetic index. Um, we have questionnaires. They go to programs, faculty, students in selected programs. And I'm going to try to be good and keep within my five minutes, um, my two minutes. Uh, and, but we are collecting data from institutions, doctoral programs, faculty, and students with these questionnaires. With uniform de definitions, we get comparable data. Um, for each group that we give the questionnaires to, uh, we ask different things so we can present a, a whole picture. Um, we will conduct studies to derive these weights and possibly do rankings on different dimensions. 
Um, and we are going to present a database. And by the way, our institutions and programs are not anonymous. Okay, so the universities who have agreed to participate um, have said, all right, you know, we, we are willing to show our data, um, which is very rare in this kind of a study. Um, we will put together a database, uh, rather like the UNDP one, that will allow um, users to say whatever is important, what are the comparable institutions in this field, and they can do the comparisons. And that database will be updatable, so it's not going to be just every 10 years as it is now. Um, this is a list, I, I'm presenting a list of these characteristics, but I'm not going to go through each of them. Thank you. Um, but what I do want to say, well, first, that one of the difficulties that we had was simply figuring out what fields should be rated. Um, it was highly controversial, uh, partly because the biological sciences do not um, classify themselves very uh, easily and because they're changing rapidly. So that was a major part of getting ready to do this. Um, it's used by lots of people, by administrators, um, department chairs, uh, we hope this time it will be used more by prospective students. Um, why should the academies do it? Because any, this is a highly controversial thing to do and anyone else um, is, has, there's a problem of self-interest. Um, and so the academies are, although all of our, many of our members are university people, um, it goes, uh, it, we're viewed as, as unbiased. Um, but we also have the expertise to do this evaluation. Um, our studies are data-based and we won't rely on reputational rankings. Uh, what I want to do, because there really isn't time to do justice to a uh, very complicated study, is to give you a website and on that website, um, there are copies of our questionnaires, um, copies of the frequently asked questions about the study, and um, I hope that since assessment is really important to know where you are in changing universities, um, that we may be able to give you a tool or something you can borrow from uh, to improve uh, education in the Islamic world. Thank you.